Hi, this is QA Shahin, and today we are going to look at the before and after hooks that you can write as part of your Jasmine tests. We're going to look at what a hook is and how to write hooks, and then we are going to look at a demo of writing hooks. So, what is a hook? A hook is something that automatically runs when you run your test. So, for instance, when you run your test, the way your test is invoked is by it having run through a describe block. And the way you invoke your describe block is by having a test runner method run it for you. So, for example, when you run Jasmine on the command line, what that does is that looks for all the specs it can see. And when it finds a spec, it then tries to run a describe block and then it runs all the subsequent it blocks inside that describe block. But the way a hook works is slightly different. When you run a test, you have the ability to run certain code before and after running a test at various levels of that test. And when you run these methods automatically, that type of method is called a hook. So hooks are very good for allowing you to set up stuff for a test as well as clean up stuff for a test. So for instance, let's just say you wanted to run a test and let's say you had two or three tests and between the two and three tests, you had some code that was identical, i.e. the first two lines of that code for each of that test was exactly the same. And maybe the last few lines were also the same. You could easily move those lines of code into the hook so that when you write a test from that point forward, you are only concerned with writing the test code for the test as opposed to writing any setup or any cleanup code because that would have been taken care of automatically for you in your hook. So let's do a really quick demo to see how to write hooks and what they look like. So to get us started, I've written a very simple describe block with a simple and single it test. So let's run this really quickly just to make sure that it's all working. So I'm going to navigate to the project and I'm just going to say Jasmine. And we can see that it only ran the one single test. To better demonstrate how hooks work, let's copy this test two more times just so we have a little bit easier time to make comparisons later on in the video. So all I'm doing is I'm just relabeling the test to one, two, and three. So let's run this again really quickly. And we can see that it's printed out all the relevant comments. So let's start looking at hooks. Now, how do you write a hook? Well, the syntax of a hook is very similar to the syntax of a describe or an it block. And it looks like this. So if you have a look, the structure of a before all hook in this instance is exactly the same as a describe or a knit block. The only difference is that we don't include a string which represents the name of the describe or a knit block. So to write a before all hook, all you do is you write the before all keyword followed by function followed by the code that you want to write. So now that we know what the syntax of a hook looks like, what does this particular method do? Well, what this does is this runs just once and it runs before any test block has been executed. To be more specific, the before all hook runs just once per describe block and it runs before any of the it block have executed. So let's quickly demonstrate this by writing a simple console log and as part of the log we can say something like running the before all hook so let's save this and run it and see what happens so here we can see that before any of the tests were executed the before all hook was executed and we can only see that it was only executed the one time similarly we can run hooks before each of the tests are executed and that is an additional hook called the before each
So let's save this and run this and see what that looks like. So now we can see that we have two hooks which are running before any of the tests are considered for execution. The first hook that runs is the before all hook, which runs only the one time and it runs before any of the tests are executed. But the before each hook runs every time before any given test is executed. So for example, when we run test 01, the before each hook is executed. When we run test 02, the before each hook is executed again. And the same thing happens for test 03. To quickly summarize, the before all hook runs just the one time before any tests are executed and the before each hook run each time for any given test is executed. Now, similarly to running hooks before any tests are executed, we also have access to hooks which run after tests have been executed. So the first hook we're going to look at is the after all hook. So this is the after all hook. The function of the after all hook is to run this hook after every single test in this test file have executed. So let's quickly save this and see what that looks like. So now we can see that when we run the test, before we run the test for each test run, we run it before each hook. And we also run the before all hook before any of the tests are executed. However, once all the tests have finished execution, the after all hook is executed. And just like the before all hook, it is executed just the one time. So similarly to the before each hook, there's also an after each hook. Okay, so let's save this and run this also. So now we can see that when we started Jasmine and we started running the test. The first thing that happened was the before all hook was executed and this only happened the one time and before any of the tests were executed for each test run the before each hook was executed. But now we have an addition we have the after each hook so it looks like for each test run the after each hook runs one time. So the same thing happens for test run 02 and finally test run on three. So if we take a step back and have a look at this from a whole perspective, the hooks which are labeled as all only run one time and only run either before any test have executed or after every test have finished execution. And the each hooks, depending on either if there are before or if there are an after, run either just before a given test has either started or stopped test execution. Also notice that when we run tests in a describe block, the tests they run sequentially, i.e. from top to bottom. But when you have hooks, hooks do not take into account any sequential ordering. They run as per their design, i.e. they either run before a test or after a test. The fact that we wrote our after hooks on top of the test code for the its blocks didn't make a difference to the functionality that they serve. So the final thing to talk about is how can these hooks be really useful? So this kind of ties back to the presentation that we went through at the very beginning of this video, i.e. the before hooks are very good for test setup purposes, i.e. to reduce code duplication, to help maintain similar test steps which might be shared across all the tests and the after hooks are very good for doing cleanup before any test is executed i.e. when a test has finished. So if we take a, an example let's just say this test was executed and this test left our 
system in such a state that we weren't very happy about it we could use an after each or an after all hook to kind of clean up the state of that test so that when the next test is executed it comes in as a straight clean state so what have we talked about in this video so in this video we looked at hooks we looked at what a hook is and how to write them but more importantly we looked at why you would write them and the importance they bring to test the importance they bring to test is that they help to promote code readability and they help to make your code a little bit more maintainable over time because you are promoting code reuse and you're reducing code duplication thanks a lot for watching this video i will see you in the next one